Hello, my beautiful souls. Welcome back to part two of my Ethnic Reborn painting tutorial. I hope you enjoyed part one. And if you haven't seen it yet, I definitely encourage watching part one before you watch part two. But anyway, if you guys remember the very ending of part one, we were painting or we were applying our ethnic layer to our Evangeline her head <laughs> to be more specific it was her head that's where we left off so right here I'm showing you the application of layer one just because I wanted to do a little recap and just talk a little bit before we dive into what we're doing next so um, if I didn't mention it in my last video I really hope I did but I cannot remember after this um, we are definitely going to bake our head bake all the limbs before we apply layer two you want to bake between each layer because your oil will not do well if you apply a second layer while it's not baked but anyway I have started with a limb here we are already applying our second layer of what I call my ethnic skin tone mix I don't have a name for it I just that's just what I call it. <laughs> when my wife tells me, hey, can you make me a little bit of your ethnic skin layer? I know exactly what she's talking about. But um, she hasn't painted a uh, darker skin tone baby in recent times, so I haven't had to make it. But anyway, we are applying our second layer in the same fashion we applied our first layer. Nothing is different. We are just applying more skin tone because we are making an ethnic baby and we want those nice dark tone colors on our baby. One thing I would love to point out in this video that I didn't point out in my last one, if you see the application of paint that goes on the vinyl, so what I apply with my brush, so from the bowl to my brush to the vinyl, you see is a very small amount. For us women that like to do our makeup, think of it as foundation. We apply just a small little bit on her area and then we, what do we do? We smooth that around, right? We don't leave that big glob of foundation on our face. We move it around, we smooth it around with a cosmetic sponge or with our fingers, with whatever you prefer. So think about it this way, like you are sort of in a way applying foundation to your baby. Uh, but you want to make sure it's very, very, very thin. We're not doing uh, full coverage here. <laughs> it's more like medium coverage. And we are applying it to every little part of our doll. The creases, the nail beds, um, the lips, everything. Inside the ears, just the first two layers only, okay? Especially if you are working with a very pale reborn doll kit. If your reborn doll is not as pale as this kit here made by Laura Lee Eagles, and I can think of um, kits that are not as pale to me. I mean, I haven't bought a kit in a very long time, and I'm not lying when I say that, because I mostly work on customs and they are sent to me, and most of them are light skin tone, um, light skin vinyl cust uh, customs. But in the past, maybe like in 2015, if I would order an Elisa Marks kit or maybe an Olga kit, they would be more of a peachy tone. So those babies you want to be careful with, um, especially if you don't neutralize like how I recommended in my part one video. You want to be careful with how much skin you apply, especially on the lips, because we want to get more of a pink reddish tone on our lips, not a uh, darker brown, at least with the way that I paint. I know everybody paints different. So, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys that little clue there and always make sure to dab or squeeze your sponge that you're working with because as you are applying paint and you are moving that paint around with your sponge you are collecting the oil that you have applied on your vinyl and that oil like i said is very dangerous to be on your vinyl and very dangerous to be on your sponge for a long time because it will mess with the application of your paint so you'll see me here and there dab my sponge off when I feel it necessary and um, you can already see some markings on my paper towels there where I dab the sponge I just pretty much just squeeze it to that paper towel and then I get back to work it's not something that I take too too serious but I do want to make sure it happens I 
I also want to thank people that have already left comments in the part one tutorial. I just want to let you know that I will reply to those comments in the next day or two. I just haven't been feeling well in terms of medication. Now I am working on getting off these medications that I'm on that I really, really don't need. Um, so it's been very hard. I am on the last set of pills that I need to get off and that one is the most difficult. So I have been just a little sick this week, so I apologize. But this morning I am um, putting this tutorial for you guys and I just feel amazing. So I'm taking advantage of that time. So I'm putting the tutorial together and if my if I keep feeling unwell, I will reply to those comments and any more comments that come in today. But isn't this just beautiful, guys? So I've been painting ethnic dolls. I think the first one that I tried was in 2012 and I didn't give it a try anymore because I felt like I really didn't know what I was doing. So I just focused on my Caucasian tone babies just to really perfect the art with those. And then I decided to get brave again <laughs> in uh, uh, 2014, I believe where I created my uh, another ethnic baby and I painted her differently and I was just like oh my goodness I am so in love with ethnic reborns and ethnic painting so I painted a few more then and then I kind of stopped and then I started painting them again when I moved here to Riverside and I discovered a different way of painting them using the linseed oil but before I used the linseed oil for a couple of years I was painting them using thinner so thinner like Mona Lisa um, the odorless thinners and um, I will tell you guys between the both I really do prefer working with linseed oil I know it looks scary but it's very easy to work with as long as you realize that the oil is not there to stay on the doll it's just there to help you spread the paint with the thinner though if you just use thinner we get a lot of patchy uneven surfaces um, what I do when that happens is I go back and I grab a clean sponge and I pretty much just soften up that area with the sponge by rubbing that area with the sponge so rubbing that part of the vinyl that looks a little uneven and try to even it out although it doesn't really even out as nice as it could now with the linseed oil I get flawless layers I'm not kidding that's why I still use it and I will have to say, based on the experiences that I have had, you guys know that I have taught two different ethnic classes, and I am trying to teach a third one here, but we have to wait once everything in the world settles down. But anyway, um, I will have to tell you that people do have a hard time, and I really, really think, based on what I've seen, is what I have been expressing, which is people do not really remove the oil off the vinyl and that is very important um, make sure you remove the oil and not the color it's really hard to remove the color once a color is on the vinyl it is really on the vinyl it's just the oil you want to make sure you absorb with your sponge and I'm sorry I keep repeating myself about this but it's just very very important I've seen it in my classes I've seen it with my wife here in person but I will tell you, people do overcome this problem. I have seen it with first time reborn mom. I believe she changed her name to Twice a Child, also known as Manda. I have seen her conquer this and in my class, she took a my second class, my first and second class. And even in my first class, she was amazing. So don't be afraid. Um, this is definitely something that can be conquered especially with practice if you are having a hard time with it at first but anyway yeah this is how i paint my ethnic babies and i just cannot see myself going back to using thinner i definitely definitely need the linseed oil in my paint now i have actually started using linseed oil on my caucasian babies as well like linseed oil has changed my life i use it now on a lot of things and if you stay tuned and with the more videos that i share you are going to see this linseed oil is my best friend <laughs> 
So I'll let you guys enjoy this final limb that I'm sharing here in this video of applying the second layer of our ethnic skin tone color with linseed oil. I do not film the following parts on camera just because it's pretty much self-explanatory. We're just doing the second layer and everything is going to be done the same way as in the first layer. Double sure that the color is not going to come off. Go ahead and bake it a second time after it has cooled the first time around. And it works if you flip your limbs to the other side and let the other side of the limbs get the heat as well. So that to really make sure that that color is really set in there. But you guys, as long as that oil is not there, your color will set. So the oil prevents the color from setting. That's why it's so important that the paint, or I should say that the oil is not present during baking time. Before I end this video, however, I will show you what the doll looks like with both skin layers applied. So that will definitely give you a good guidance to what you should be looking for, especially if you're painting Evangeline. Keep in mind, if you're painting a different vinyl color, your result will vary. Also, when you're creating your own skin mix, because I don't have ratios, I just mix my skin color to the point that I like it, um, that also will cause variation in skin color. If you are wondering again what I use to mix my skin ethnic layer, go ahead and watch part one where I share all of the paints that you will need to create this skin mix. So here she is on the basket and I'll show you guys. Her color is already baked, so she's actually ready for the next step. So here she is with two layers on her and just waiting for the next step. So this is what your baby should sort of look like, may vary a little bit in skin tone, but for the most part, this is what two layers with linseed oil get you, and that is as far as we need to go. So that's it for part two, guys. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or just anything you would like to tell me. I appreciate your time, your attention, and your love, and especially your passion for learning about Reborns and learning how I paint them because I know everybody paints them differently. So stay tuned for part three. Have a beautiful day, and I'll talk to all of you very, very soon. Bye.